yeah, come with this. It's going to be amazing. Stay tuned, you're gonna absolutely love this. I am so excited. I've been waiting for this moment all year round, probably for the last five years, if I'm being honest. Um, yeah, come with this, it's gonna be amazing. Getting into a new product that is absolutely gonna change the wet mammal channel forever. I'm gonna get hit on camera. So I'm sure most of you will have guessed or know what. I'm picking up today because of, I probably would have included it in the thumbnail or in the title or whatever, but I cannot express how much this is going to change diving. Um, I've never personally owned a boat since I first went out spearfishing on one with um, my dear friend James down in Victoria and we went spearfishing for bluefin tuna off them. They are so versatile, you can get out in really kind of crazy conditions that a boat just wouldn't be safe to do so. They're gonna take me and Mon and the Wet Mammal Channel dive into quite literally new depths. Trying on. <laughs> so as you can see, Dean's just handed this over to me. It's an absolute weapon. So massive, massive shout out to Cronulla Sidu and huge thank you. This thing is an absolute weapon. There's no other word for it. I cannot wait to get it on the water for the first mission. And um, some fish are definitely going to get smacked. Some adventures are going to be had. And yeah, some beaches are going to get camped. Can't wait. We get out on the jet ski. We're geared up to go camping. And this is my first ever anchor placement. I'm going to do it by hand, make sure that the jet ski isn't going anywhere. So lock it under the rocks. And then it's time to go spearfishing. First off, we encounter some incredible rays. There's tons of these guys around. Um, I've never actually seen them quite as dense. I did film lots, but I only show you guys a few. It's good to be back in the water. It's been a busy work season, um, which has come to a bit of an end. So finally, I can get wet, test out the jet ski. And this is the most typical thing ever. So after swimming around for three minutes, I decide to load my gun as I do this huge dusky decides to bail out from underneath me. I didn't even see it, and on the slow-mo footage, he was so well camouflaged. Lucky, lucky dusky. Um, although he might have been over the new slot limit of 70 centimeters, so might have lived to have seen another day anyway. I move out of the sandy area and the shallows and make my way towards some deeper ledge. There's a bit of bait action and there's more fish life. Um, this is quite good. There was Silver Drummer, Black Drummer, Brim, Ludrix, um, and I even saw a goat fish in the distance. I really wanted to nail a good first fish for the jet ski. I came across this school of mullet as I decided to move my jet ski, and I did um and ah about taking a mullet as my first fish on the jet ski, but decided against. So we move spots, we get reset up. The viz isn't as good, but when you get down low, um, the viz actually turns on. And after seeing some trevally, I do see some kingfish come through. They're a bit small, but definitely legal. So I put a shot into the lat line of this kingy. He fights, but the spear's gone straight through. The flopper's deployed. Um, he's not gonna come off. So I can pretty much just get myself up to the surface and then skull drag him up with me. He's not gonna come off. 
and um, this area is not too bad for sharks but still i just wanted to move back into shallower water um, because mom was on the jet ski and she was a fair distance away from me so i bring the kingy up and yeah he's got a bit of a fight in him we put an icky through him make sure that the fish is dead remove the spear and then we start with the bleeding process so my spear gun's not actually on a floating flag setup on this one, so I'm holding on to my spear, but you can see my spear gun's 85 centimeters, so I've got about 15 or so centimeters off that, so it's about 70 centimeter fish, which I'm like really, really happy with. Um, pretty cool to get my first dive on the jet ski and get a kingy. So I go present it to sunbathing Mon, and yeah, we chuck her into the SK. How good. The Esky's actually got a measuring gauge on the front, which is like 65 centimeters, um, and this goes over it on the other side. But cheeky mackerel inside the fish. Um, always funny when you find like a fresh fish. I've actually found a live fish before, which must have only been eaten in the last like 20 seconds or so. Oh, yeah, be about um, when I've taken the shot into the kingy, but we'll use him for burly. Um, absolutely stoked. Uh, that just lift, lift up the lip. Thank you. Oh. I'm going to go back there because there, there might be more, and there's maybe Travali as well. I won't do too much longer. I go back into the water because of that fishy ledge was really firing up. The bait's really nervous, it's moving around a lot, it's reacting an awful lot to me and I wanted to take my chances at either a bigger king or I did sight a long tail tuna and it would have been awesome to have grabbed him. He was like 20 kilos, he was a beast um, but unfortunately he didn't show up on film. I just wanted to show you, so this is a really bouldery kind of slope and it's really good ground. Um, it does go off quite deep, it goes off to about 25 meters um, and it's a sandy bottom as well so I'm just diving the edge. You could get anything along here, snapper, all sorts. This is the footage where I'm chasing after the long tail tuna um, but unfortunately you can't see a thing, the visibility isn't great and this camera isn't particularly good for low light settings so when the vis is bad it's not that fantastic. I do decide to continue diving in this area in hopes that the long tail would come back. I do see these school of trevally, um, they're nice silver trevally and they go 35, 40 centimeters. So I take a real Hail Mary of a shot on a moving fish and I do shoot it, which is awesome. But um, trevally have got super soft flesh and it basically just kind of tears off. So I was a bit devastated about that. Um, decided to burly up that mackerel that the kingfish spat out and the bait really goes to life. Like mackerel don't care about eating mackerel, they'll do it. I come down onto this sandy bottom or the ledge of the sandy bottom. Um, a real good opportunity for snapper here. It's a nice deep ledge with sand and it's just that kind of broken reef which snapper absolutely love. Um, so I'm trying to hang down the bottom and see if any snapper are going to come in. There was only juvenile unfortunately, but check this, as I turn around you can see that wobbygong shark. Make sure you remember him because of, he'll be important in a moment. So I decided to dive on this spot like three or four times. Um, big blue groper, I always see them as a really good indicator fish when there's lots of bait moving around and you see the blue groper moving around amongst them. I go down onto the bottom and then just kind of sit there. You can see snapper slightly in the distance, but they're all undersized, so we'll leave them be. Um, I'm just really, really wanting bonito, kingfish, or that tuna to come by. Um, not focused on too much else. I do decide to have another drop down. This time I'm going right to the front of the sand ledge, away from the wobbygong, and the wobbygong decided to swim over and then have a little bite. Um, not quite sure what he was thinking. Um, somebody said that it's the breeding season for them at the moment and they're a bit more territorial during the breeding season. Um, I don't know how accurate that is, but this guy was definitely a bit of a dick, so um, didn't appreciate that. Gave him a bit of a kick and a stab and yeah, hopped up. With that, I decided to call it a day for the dive in. We already had a kingy in the esky and was pretty stoked about that. We did try setting up on the beach and doing a beach cook up, 
but um, unfortunately my anchor wasn't holding. All lots of new learnings. Um, we were going to camp on this beach, but decided to basically head back and call it a day. Yeah. And now we're home. So, I think it was a super sensible decision to pull the trip. Although the trip would have been super fun, um, it just wasn't worth the risk of the jet ski just getting swept away basically in the middle of the night and I wouldn't have had a good night's sleep and we would have been screwed. So it was a good call to make the decision that we weren't well enough equipped for the trip and that's okay. These are all learnings. We're brand new to the jet ski and the jet ski life, but um, it's what it is. So. Let's get stuck into this kingy. We're gonna make some capaccio. For all those wondering, yes, it's a pretty small kingfish, um, but he's 72 centimeters, which I'm pretty happy with. He's gonna have delicious, sweet, sweet meat, and stoked for that. So let's make up a wet mammal capaccio, winging it. Basically, we bought ingredients that we found at the supermarket, so let's go. All right, so we've filleted one side of the kingy. Um, we're definitely not gonna eat more than all of this. Um, so he's gonna go back in the fridge and we might have to get a smoke on and smoke half a fish, what do you reckon? Just fits on the angle, which is good. So we get one lovely fillet and we've got a little bit of the belly as well. I'm just gonna separate this from the skin, do it by making a little notch and then holding the skin, running the fillet blade along the edge and you'll strip all the skin off. The red flesh that you can see it. on top is quite fishy, yeah. so we tend to remove that, cut out the bones and then just shave off that red fishiness. Um, honestly, it's, it's good for some stuff, like um, it's great for making stock and it's great for burly it seems. But uh, yeah, it's not, not so great for flavor and presentation. So we portion the kingfish up into manageable sizes because we're not gonna have the whole side so today. But these glassware containers are amazing. They do keep extra life in your fish. I used to always store them in plastic bags and in Tupperware. And yeah, it just doesn't last as long. Glassware is definitely the way to go. Um, a few sexy shots of the sashimi and as this is such a special occasion we're getting the Miyabi out then we do some radish just chop this up you actually want it to be really quite fine the radish um, go some homegrown chili for a bit of heat passion fruit big old passion fruit plenty of juice yum First we add in our soy sauce, then we're gonna add in our pre-made yuzu and our passion fruit. Mix it all up, add in some finely grated garlic for some additional heat, some pepper or capsicum and Very chili. quickly, we're gonna just have a little dip of this. So this is straight off the belly. Um, let's see, it's heaps. Let's see how our sauce is tasting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nailed it on the fly. That is delicious. Let's go. Then it's time for presentation. I lay it out, but Divemon takes over and creates a beautiful plate. Um, I don't pull the sauce in the middle because it will naturally make its way to the middle from the plate being slightly curved. And just decorate and make it look pretty. Honestly, the aesthetics do enhance the flavor. Um, so it's worth spending a few minutes just making it look really, really nice and yeah, it just gets that mouth watering. Um, super excited to try this Capaccio. In the Christmas spirit, we've uh, decided to chuck on some hats for you guys because of this may or may not come out before Christmas. No, it will come out before Christmas. This is it, Kingfish Capaccio Mon, take it away. So the recipe is completely one. We just went to the supermarket and bought some things that we thought would be good together. And we did want to get some like mustard flowers, but couldn't find any, so anyway. All right, what's the verdict? Mm. So good. So good. 
Yeah, I really love the sauce that Sam has made. It has a lot of um, passion fruit in it. So obviously I love passion fruit. But yeah, really good. I love it. Yeah? Love it. Out of 10? I rate it out of 10 and 10. Pretty good. We'll take that. She goes in for more. All right. I reckon this is going to be delicious. We're using homegrown chilies as well, um, which have a decent kick to them. For the first bite, what I'm going to do is just try a bit of kingfish on its own. No radish, just kingfish, sashimi, in the sauce, the kingfish carpaccio. Let's see what it tastes like. Mm -hmm. good. You're keeping that to yourself, that's really good. That Can I just redo delicious. my reaction <laughs> No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can be more <laughs> <laughs> She's faking it ladies and gentlemen. Um, no, that's absolutely delicious. Honestly, kingfish, sashimi, raw, ceviche, carpaccio, however you have it, like having it not cooked is, is really, really good. Um, that's a 10 out of 10. We're gonna absolutely smack this because of look at it, it's delicious. But I hope you've enjoyed. Sorry that it wasn't the jet ski camping video that you maybe thought it was going to be, but it's just the way it went. Mon's loving the jet ski, and we'll definitely be going out on it over Christmas. Um, thank you to everyone who supported the channel over the past year and even years before. Huge, huge thanks. Um, big things in store. And if you like the White Mammal channel, obviously hit that sub button, chuck a like, and yeah, check the links in the description. All right, so big Merry Christmas from us. Hope everybody has a happy new year and stay tuned for Wet Mammal in 2024 because in 2024 we've got some incredible adventures starting in January, but then crazy ones starting in February. And yeah, it's just gonna. And March. Evolve. And April, <laughs> and May, and June. All throughout the year we're going to be loaded with wet mammals, so you're going to have wet mammal content back probably bi-weekly for the entire year at least. Um, we'll try and punch out some stuff weekly, but we'll see how we go with the weather. So thank you for watching, hit that sub button, hit that like button, drop a comment. We're going to smash this and sign off, so until next time guys. Stay wet, stay fed. Catch ya. <laughs> stay wet. <laughs> Stay fit. <laughs> Until next time. Are we saying catch you? No, you what say. What are we saying? You say stay, 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 wet. stay fed, and then I'll say catch you. Okay. All right, guys. Until next time. Stay. <laughs> <laughs> stay wet. Stay. Stay. <laughs> catch. <laughs>